Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support, subscribe. How the Queen is a Tudor Monarch. Today we are looking at the ancestry of Queen Elizabeth II and how she is a direct descendant of King Henry VII, thus making her a Tudor Monarch in modern day history. Our Sovereign Queen was born on the 21st of April 1926 and was christened Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor. She is the longest serving monarch in English history and is actually working towards her Platinum Jubilee to mark an amazing 70 years of service to her country and the Commonwealth. Elizabeth II was crowned Queen in her coronation on the 2nd of June 1953 and she, alongside her husband, Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, have been the face of the United Kingdom for the last few generations. Now, Elizabeth is a direct descendant of George VI, her father. George VI was King of the United Kingdom from 1936 until his death in 1952. George, and subsequently his daughter Elizabeth, only became the monarchs due to the abdication of George's brother, Edward VIII. George, known as Bertie to those who were close to him, was born in the reign of Queen Victoria, his great-grandmother. Bertie was also named after his great-grandfather, Prince Consort Albert. George is a direct descendant from George V. George V was King of the United Kingdom from the 6th of May 1910 until his death in 1936. He was the grandson of Queen Victoria and inherited the throne from his brothers. He was third in line to the throne. He served in the Royal Navy and it was with the death of his brother that put him directly in line for the throne and on the death of his father in 1910 he became King Emperor of the United Kingdom and the British Dominions and the Emperor of India. George is a direct descendant of Edward VII. Now Edward VII was King Emperor from 1901 until 1910. He was the son of Queen Victoria and Edward was nicknamed Bertie. He was heir apparent to the British throne for almost 60 years. During his time as the Prince of Wales, Edward travelled the country and carried out public duties. He toured North America and India, but despite his proved public successes, his reputation as a playboy prince was not one that Queen Victoria approved of. When Edward became king, he helped modernise the British home fleet and played a role in the recognition of the British army after the Second Boer War. And like I have said, Edward is a direct descendant of Queen Victoria, his mother. Now Queen Victoria was christened Alexandra Victoria and she was queen from 1837 until her passing in 1901. She reigned in what was known as the Victorian era and until our current queen, her reign was the longest seen for any other British monarch. Victoria reigned for 63 years and seven months and in that time, she was part of a period of industrial, political, scientific and military change, as well as an era marked by a great expansion of the British Empire. Victoria inherited the throne when she was just 18, when her father's three elder brothers died, without any surviving legitimate children. Victoria was known for her attempts to influence government policy and ministerial appointments, and she was seen publicly as a national icon who was identified as having strict standards of personal morality. Victoria is directly descended from Prince Edward, the Duke of Kent. Prince Edward was the fourth son of King George III. Although he was not a monarch, through the lack of legitimate children from his brothers before they died, he played a part in the passing of the throne to his daughter Victoria. Edward was the first member of the royal family to live in North America for an extended period of time and he actually lived there for nine years. He is also known as being the first prince to enter the United States after their independence and is credited to be the first person who used the term Canadian, meaning both French and English settlers in Upper and Lower Canada. Now Edward is a direct descendant of George III, his father. 
George III was actually called George William Frederick and he was the king from 1760 to 1801 and after the Union of Ireland and Great Britain he became king of the two United Kingdoms from 1801 until his death in 1820. George was also the king of Hanover. Unlike his two predecessors he was born in Britain and spoke English as his first language. George's reign is marked by serious military conflict involving his kingdoms, the rest of Europe and places such as Africa, the Americas and Asia. In his early reign, he defeated France in the Seven Year War, becoming the dominant European power in North America and India. However, many of Britain's American colonies were soon lost in the American War of Independence. Further wars against revolutionary and Napoleonic France from 1793 concluded in the defeat of Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. George is a direct descendant of George II, who is his grandfather, but George's dad was called Frederick, the Prince of Wales. Now Frederick was heir apparent to the British throne from 1727 until he died at the age of 44 from a lung injury. Frederick was born in Hanover, the Holy Roman Empire in Germany, in 1707 and was a lover of music, playing the viola and the cello. He loved the natural sciences and art, but became an issue for his parents. He made a point of opposing them in everything they did and every decision they made. But Frederick would not be king, having died before his time. He was the direct descendant of King George II, his father. Now George II was king from 1727 until his passing in 1760. He is the most recent of British monarchs to be born outside of Great Britain as he was actually born and raised in northern Germany. The Act of Settlement in 1701 and the Acts of Union in 1707 enabled his grandmother, Sophia of Hanover, and her Protestant descendants to inherit the British throne. George as king exercised little control over British domestic policy as this was largely controlled by Parliament and George is a direct descendant from George I, his father. Now George I was king from 1714 until 1727. He, like his son, was born in Hanover, Germany, and after the death of his mother and second cousin Queen Anne, he ascended to the throne as Anne's closest living Protestant relative under the Act of Settlement 1701. Jacobites, who wanted to return the line of succession, to the senior line of the House of Stuart by attempting, but ultimately failing, to dispose of George and replace him with James Stuart, Anne's Catholic half-brother, and George I is a direct descendant of Sophia, his mother. Sophia of Hanover, born Princess of the Palatinate, was the Electress of Hanover by marriage to Elector Ernest Augustus and later Heiress Presumptive to the throne of England and Scotland and Ireland under the Act of Settlement 1701. She died less than two months before she would have become Queen. Sophia was daughter to Elizabeth Stuart and she grew up in the Dutch Republic. She had seven children who survived to adulthood and was also the patron of the arts having commissioned Herrenhausen Palace and its gardens. Sophia is a direct descendant to Elizabeth Stuart, her mother. Now, Elizabeth Stuart was Electress of the Palatinate and Queen of Bohemia. Elizabeth is often referred to as the Winter Queen, as her husband's reign lasted just one winter. Elizabeth was the second child of James I of England, Ireland and Scotland, and Anne of Denmark. And with the demise of Anne, Queen of Great Britain, the last Stuart monarch in 1714, Elizabeth's grandson, by her daughter Sophia, succeeded to the throne as King George I. And as I have mentioned, Elizabeth is a direct descendant of James VI and I of England, Scotland and Ireland. Now, James VI and I was King of Scotland from 1567 and then King of England and Ireland from the Union of the Scottish and English Crowns from March 1603 until he died in 1625. Although the kingdoms of England and Scotland were individual sovereign states with their own parliaments, judiciaries and laws, 
they were both ruled by James in a personal union. James succeeded to the throne of Scotland when he was just 13, after his mother Mary, Queen of Scots, was forced to abdicate in his favour, and in 1603, on the death of the last Tudor monarch Elizabeth I, he succeeded to the English throne. James is the son of Mary, Queen of Scots. Mary, Queen of Scots, was Queen of Scotland from being only six days old. Her mother acted as regent, and Mary did not return to Scotland after living in France until 1561, but by this time she was old enough to rule in her own right. Mary suffered greatly. She was married three times, and all three of her husbands died, either by illness, foul play, or natural causes. Mary had one son, James, and when he was merely a child, he was taken away from her. Mary was also imprisoned for the remaining years of her life. One year was spent in Scotland at Lochleven Castle, and then the final 18 years were then spent in English captivity at various castles and manors before her beheading at Fotheringhay. Mary was a direct descendant of James V of Scotland, her father. Now, James V of Scotland reigned as King of Scotland from 1513 until he died in 1542. He had known his baby daughter only six days before his untimely passing during the Scottish defeat at the Battle of Solway Moss. James was the third son of his parents, James IV of Scotland and his wife, Margaret Tudor. This made James V the grandson of King Henry VII and the nephew of King Henry VIII. James's mother was Margaret Tudor. Now Margaret Tudor was Queen Consort of Scotland from 1503 until 1513, via her marriage to James IV of Scotland. Because Margaret was grandmother to Mary Queen of Scots and to Lord Darnley, Mary's husband, she was actually both the maternal and paternal great-grandmother of James VI and I of Scotland, England and Ireland. Margaret was a direct descendant from King Henry VII, her father. Now Henry VII became King of England when he seized the crown on the 22nd of August 1485 until his death in 1509. He was the first in a long line of monarchs from the House of Tudor and created the Tudor dynasty. Henry Tudor spent 14 years in exile in Brittany. He attained the throne when his forces, supported by France, Scotland and Wales, defeated Edward IV's brother Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field. The end of the War of the Roses. He was the last King of England to win his throne on the field of battle. He cemented his claim by marrying Elizabeth of York, daughter of King Edward and thus the Tudor Rose. The combination of the Red Rose of Lancaster and the White Rose of York was born. So, travelling back through our current Queen's ancestry, we can see that Henry VII is her 15 times great-grandfather, thus making her a Tudor Queen. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.